My topic around revenue is growing smart, specifically building a sales team that's going to produce revenue for your company. That's the topic. So the, um, we have 10 minutes to cover a lot of stuff. So what I know is that most small business owners want, in their heart of hearts, a rock'em sock'em salesperson or associate who's going to go out, drive business, help them get the firm to, their next, to the next level. Right? That's what they want. And they want that to happen immediately with no interruptions and no personal involvement. <laughs> Has that ever happened for anyone on the first try? All right, so what I, um, it's a noble goal, right? It's this concept of working on the business rather than in the business. And it's a very noble goal, but it can turn into fantasy pretty quickly, right? As my picture demonstrates. Because what happens when the people, you know, you're up, I'm charging, right? And then what happens to the arrow? People just, you know, they need to be told what to do in the morning, right? We're business leaders, we're driving things, and then we expect that the people we're going to hire are going to have that same level of motivation. It's just rare. Fair? So um, what I want to do is just confirm, right, that it takes a little longer than you think to get a sales team up and running. And then we're going to talk about some common pitfalls and some ways to avoid them. And then in order to set the specs, I just want to look at, you know, just take a quick review of your current situation. Right? So in, in the world of small business, we can kind of categorize things. Right? So there are boutique professional service firms. Right? And a professional service firm I'll just define as an exchange of time for money. Right? So expertise is key. AR, billing, very key, right? And at the same time, you've got to drive new business to your firm. All right, anybody, just a show of hands, who's in the camp of professional service firm? Okay, lots. Okay, and then the other side of the spectrum, I'll just call it your traditional B2B enterprise, where you're selling a product or service to another company, right? And here, it's a little easier to separate the functions of sales and sales management from the other parts of the organization and then manage it. So who's in the B2B space? Okay, and then any B2C folks? Business to consumer? Okay. All right, awesome. All right, so um, the other piece of that is stage of growth. And the reason why I point it out is because when you're a small company growing and bringing a sales team in, the challenges really are distinct at each level. Right, so first and foremost, you've got the individual entrepreneur. And that person is all about driving revenue, right, so that they can pay the mortgage. Right? <laughs> driving, more, driving revenue so they can pay the mortgage, and then after that, reinvest into the company. So there are many places that you could reinvest into a company, right? Um, it can be marketing, it can be financials, it can be operations. I'm going to um, assert that those, that's your business planning, right? The Brian Marshall, who's not with us, you know, you got to get have your business plan together, right? But for today, I'm just going to sort out that you're reinvesting your money into a sales team. Um, all right, so you reinvest into a sales team, and then the next stage, so you know, like we got one to five salespeople, Right? Who's in that category where you've moved beyond your selling yourself? Okay, so the majority of you are selling, you're responsible for sales in your organization. Is that fair? Okay. All right, and then a handful have people that you've moved to. All right, and then the third stage is multiple sales people and client-facing teams. All right, awesome. So just kind of setting the stage for where you're at. So. Um, uh, I want to look at some common problems. All right, so um, we're going to play a little word game so I can point out what the first common problem is. And the word game is this. So I don't know the word, you all know the word. The word is sales. So now you have to give me clues so that I can guess at the word. With me? Password. Pa password? Yeah, so what clues are you going to give me so I can guess the word sales? Shout them out. Rhymes with snails. Rhymes with snails. <laughs> what else? Revenues. Revenues. What else? Growth. Growth. Results. Results. I don't get it. What's the word? Give me some more clues. We're in our time crunch here. Profitability. 
Profit. Solutions. Profit. Solution. What else? Frustrating. Frustrating. Pushy. 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 What else? <laughs> Demeaning. Demeaning. What else? Transactions. Transactions. How about snake oil? How about manipulative? Con man. Right? See, here we go. You guys are very nice. And it took us a while to get there. Right? When you pull back the layers, most of us have some sort of negative opinion about what is selling. Right? We, we didn't grow up, mom and dad didn't say, oh, they're going to be, you know, they said, oh, he's going to be a doctor, oh, he's going to be a fireman, oh, he's going to be an engineer. They didn't say, oh, Johnny's going to grow up to be a salesperson. It just doesn't happen. Right? The phone rings at dinner time before the Telecommunications Act, right? And then, so dad picks up the phone and says, oh, we're eating, I'm busy, and hangs up. Right? What message does he send? It's okay, it's not okay to lie unless... You're talking to a salesperson. <laughs> right? So there's a pretty big stigma around selling. So how does that show up? Let's look at it from the sales side and the leadership side. What are the clues, what are the symptoms that a stigma of selling exists in your organization? What kind of clues do you get from the sales side? Are you asking the question? Yeah. Uh, none, none of my associates wanted to do it. Yeah. I mean, basically, you'd say, listen, there's a great networking. You listening, Brittany? There's a great networking event. Um, she's not an associate. Um, so uh, there's a great networking event. I'd like you to go to the networking event, and they'd say, I don't feel comfortable doing that, yep. or, you know, just I'd, I'd just rather practice law. Yeah. Hence, not growing your own business. Great example. And right. we call that avoidance. Right? Avoidance happens in many different ways. Not going to the event. I'd rather be doing this. This thing is much more important. I'm working on this boss, right? Really moving it forward, getting that done, right? How about a stack of business cards, right? That just move from one side of the desk to the other. <laughs> that would be avoidance, right? So there's so what other things are there? Um, oh, referrals, right? It's pretty common to do a lot of networking, but never really get down to asking for a referral, right? Why? Because I might be too pushy. They might think I'm pushy. All related to a stigma around selling. Right, so that's the question to ask yourself. How does that show up in my firm and how does that show up in me personally? And what am I doing about it? All right, so stigma of selling, big, big, big deal. It, it exists, so we're just putting it on the table, right? Um, all right, so next common problem, bad hires. Anybody hired somebody? Anyone hired someone for sales? Right, so anybody had this experience of bad hires? <laughs> about, about equal amount of people who raised their hand the first time, raised it the second. Right, um, we usually go in with pretty high expectations. Right, remember that first slide with the arrow? Like, we go in with high expectations. I'm going to hire somebody with a Rolodex or a LinkedIn file, right, and they're going to be motivated and excited. So we go in with that. And then what we typically end up hiring is not that. And why, why is it that we, why is it that it's so hard? Who, who, who are the best people at selling themselves? Yourself. So yourself meaning, yeah, we sell ourselves and, and salespeople, right? Salespeople are pretty good. And think about it when you're at an interview, what are you doing? You're selling yourself. So you've been practicing all the moves, practicing all the answers to the five toughest questions, right? And the trick with bad hires is kind of getting beyond that first layer, right? So we think, you know, we're hiring Tom Cruise, and then they get in the office and they're jumping on the couch, right? <laughs> what happened there? It's, you know, it's really, it's, <laughs> I shouldn't use that example because it has a lot of, like, you know, People get distracted, start thinking about Tom Cruise. <laughs> All right, so um, there's a lot that goes into hiring, right? And first and foremost, it's getting beyond the outer layer of the onion, right? So, you know, what's your plan for interviewing? What are you doing to get people, to, to make sure who you're hiring is, is who you really need? Um, uh, okay, uh, here's another little rule. It's a kind of a rule that, um, isn't that pleasant? But when something happens three times, 
in three different situations, right? The same situation happens three times from three different places. Where do you look? Yourself. Uh huh. Look here, right? So if I've hired three different people, or I've had a sales situation where the sales cycle dragged out, or my margins were squeezed, if it happens three times in three different situations, you look right here. So you know the same concept with hiring. Right? Is it, is it the person I'm hiring, or at one point does it become me, the person who is doing the hiring? All right, um, so then the last um, common problem for a small business, I'm going to say, is hiring too early. So it takes time and energy to bring someone on board and get them up to speed selling. Fair? So it takes a lot of time and energy, so the first thing to ask yourself is, have I allocated enough time to have this person be successful? Or have I ha allocated enough time to determine in the first 30, 60, 90 days if my hire is good? So time is, is key. And then the other piece around hiring too early is I'm going to assert that there are other functions of the business that need to be set up, right? Like a process. So, uh, like processes. So, what do you expect that person to do every day? And how are you going to hold them accountable? Right? And frankly, you know, do you have your financials set up? Right? There are some things that we avoid and then we just keep marching on and then it comes back to bite us. So, um, the, uh, you know, do you have support staff? helping you out, and are you, as a leader, managing them effectively? Because if you're not doing that, and then you bring somebody on, right, you could just be creating a bigger mess for yourself. So hiring too early is, um, is, a, is a, an issue. All right, two quick guidelines in growing your business. Uh, I have an Abe Lincoln quote related to what we were talking about. If I had six hours to chop down a tree, I'd spend the first hour sharpening the axe. All right. I was excited to look through all the quotes and find a fun one. Um, all right. So define it like this, right? And this is where you can take a few minutes to just do some, some thinking for yourself, for your particular <coughs> firm. Define it like this. What will a salesperson or a sales associate need to be successful at my firm? Know the product first. Okay. So, what will the what will the person need, and what do I have to do accordingly? So, uh, simple systems. What systems do you need in place? Right. So, do you have a database? Crazy question. Right. Do you have a database? If you don't have a database, or you don't have an accountability system set up. You could have somebody on your staff for six months, for eight months, who hasn't sold anything, and then leaves your office with all their contacts in their LinkedIn. Right, so what just happened to your growing, your marketing tool, you know, right? It's just, it's gone. Same thing could be said as if you have a database, right, and, and you don't have a process or expectations set up, Right, so you got the database, everything's rolling along, and then that person has been there 60, 90 days, and there's been no expectations set around, hey, behavior's first, number second, first you have to get out there and network. As you get out there and network, you're going to talk to people, qualify them a little bit, ask them if they're willing to be on our database and receive our email blasts, right? And then you've got something to hold them to account to, and then you've got something to measure, is this person who I thought I hired? So preparing, you know, do you have simple systems set up? Do you have stuff documented? Do you know what your commission structure is going to be like? Do you know what, do you have an employee manual? Do you have an interview strategy? Right, most of us rely on our gut when we're interviewing. Right, and then what do, who do we end up hiring? We end up hiring the person that's just like us. So, you know, someone who's got, you know, if just like us is disorganized, bad at time management, but great at networking, right? <laughs> or, 
you know, so you, there are many examples, right, of, of, of why hiring people like us is not a good idea. <laughs> All right, um, do you have stuff documented? Do you have a system in place? I mean, frankly, hiring back to the hiring too early, one of the common pitfalls is that people say, all right, the first thing I'm gonna do is hire sales. When in push comes to shove, probably the first hire should be an administrative assistant, right? Who can get stuff off your plate so that you're focused, right? And then when your salesperson comes on, you've got some structures in place so that salesperson is not burying their head in administrative stuff, having an excuse for not making sales calls. Well, I would have if I didn't have to do this or if I didn't have to do that. Right, so what for you is sharpening the ax? Like what do you need to do in order to get yourself set up? So, you know, we just spent a few minutes on some ideas. So just take a moment to think for yourself. Right, if I'm sharpening my ax before I hire a salesperson, what do I need? What does my firm need? All right, how are we doing on time? Probably about three or four minutes. Oh, good. I've got two slides left. All right, so guidelines, uh, the other guideline to grow your sales team is this, and it really, it goes back to this, um, it's the leadership equivalent of sti the stigma of selling, right? And that is you as the leader are responsible for the sales culture in your organization. So how do you treat sales? How do you speak about sales? Um, do you, is it, um, I want to say this. What, so we were talking about what does, what does a salesperson need to be successful? I'm going to assert that one of the things they need is a boss with a healthy attitude about selling. So the majority of us are individual entrepreneurs, so we're out there driving the business, right? So what is it around selling, right, that needs to be addressed from a stigma standpoint? Right? Um, uh, so a couple other areas, like do you have a methodology? So what happens is that we're really passionate as business leaders. We're really passionate, we gotta pay for the kids' college, we gotta take vacation and save for retirement, and there's a drive that we have that we expect from the people that we hire. It's just not realistic, right? If that person had the same drive, they'd have their own business. Right, so what methodology do you have so that you can convey, get you know, this passion that's in your head into like, a team, into the culture of your organization? Are you just assuming everybody can do it, right? Or are you fundamentally thinking about, okay, here's the process, it's documented, here's where I'm weak at that process, here's where I'm strong, right? Because you, as a leader, building the culture Right? Whatever you do is what's going to reverberate through your organization. All right, and I'm going to say one other piece around culture. This culture can be defined in many different ways. And I'll say um, a culture of um, a sales culture, you could say, is equivalent to a culture of time management. Because really, you're wearing two hats. You've got to drive business, you've got to sell, and you've got to deliver, and you've got to manage, and you've got to make sure QuickBooks is good, and your HR stuff is set up, right? So there's a lot going on. So how you manage time is how your people will manage time. So, um, you know, a quick example, I've been in businesses, or I've seen businesses where, remember we talked about the systems? Got to get systems set up? Right, where they spend all their time getting the perfect system set up, right, and which is just a way to avoid selling. So I want to come back, given you're mostly small business owners, to this concept of time management and the stigma of selling. You know, why do we procrastinate? Because we can, and it shows up in many ways. So you're responsible for the, the culture and what is it that you need Right, to drive your sales culture forward, and what does your company need? Okay, so I am going to end with this thought. This is a more realistic view of what is sales and sales management. Right, You are directing a crowd, you're directing the orchestra, rather than expecting them to carry you forward. 
and it takes time and energy and a good attitude. And I appreciate your time.